Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Catskills. Today's service embraces Juneteenth and Flower Communion. They are both observations that come from and in spite of the horrors of war and captivity, they celebrate freedom and the human spirit. Today is a very special celebration of life and freedom. Our minister is Reverend Bob Janice Dillon. I am Jenny O'Grady Giddy, the worship associate for this morning. We are grateful to have attendees both in person in the sanctuary as well as virtually via Zoom. A big welcome to everyone, wherever you're attending. Unitarian Universalism is a liberal religious faith that carries no creed and welcomes all seekers. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are guided by a set of principles and written sources that encompass the many ways we come to know and understand the world, the universe, and the divine. We affirm that Black Lives Matter. We are a welcoming congregation for the LGBTQ community. We are a congregational affiliate of the Ulster Immigrant Defense Network, and we are an active voice in the effort to address climate change. Community circles are small groups of members who live in the same area. You can get connected your, to your group by contacting Laurie in the office. If you would like to contact someone here at UU Catskills, a contact list is shown on your screen. That's for the, the Zoomers. If you're a visitor and would like to be added to our mailing list, you can put your name and email address in the chat box area on Zoom or talk with any member here in the sanctuary and they will help you find the right person to make that request. Thank you to everyone who is assisting with today's service. Our hybrid services are made possible by our technical team, Bruce Weldy, who is here in the corner in the sanctuary. Our tech host today is Kristen Skara, and Kathy Atwell is assisting with the chat um, with the joys and sorrows. We encourage you to read our June newsletter that is distributed through our email list and on our website, uucatskills.org. Upcoming events for the month are in the newsletter. We have a couple of announcements. So the fundraising committee kicks off its first fundraising event immediately after today's service. Please check out the extraordinary baskets and then see Erin or Carol. And uh, you can purchase the raffle tickets that they have for each basket. The five different and creative baskets will be available until July the 24th. The raffle drawings will happen here on that final Sunday. Thank you for your support. For our prelude this morning, Catherine Catabiani will play Morning Glory by Duke Ellington.
Thank you, Catherine. And now it's Reverend Bob. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Wherever you join us from online and presence, it's so good to be together. This is a special day. Today is Juneteenth, America's deeper, fuller Independence Day, a day of freedom and reckoning, memory and hope. Today is also here in our congregation flower communion ceremony, a day of beauty amidst hardship, freedom and reckoning, memory and hope. And today is Father's Day, a day of honoring and celebration, fun and frolic, and memory and hope. Today is, well, today is today, and you're here. We're all still here on this beautiful earth, in the middle of this wondrous gift of life. And today is a day to be grateful, to love one another, stick up for each other and grow together. Today is a blessing, what a day. Now we'll explain everything about the flowers gathered here. And if you're not familiar with the history of Juneteenth, we'll explain that too. All of that will come in the, in the, in the service. Uh, this is a, a intergenerational service. So excited to have all the generations here. Um, one special announcement, there is a concert that'll be taking place here at 3 p.m. Um, that Coco Wilde and Bruce, there's Bruce in the back there, are, are, are hosting. It, um, it is a, a, a ticketed performance, So, it, it, but if you'd like to, to buy a ticket, um, do see Bruce. It's three performers that I've, one of whom I've seen, one of whom I've got their CD, Reggie Harris, Caroline Solabello, and Pat Wilter, incredible um, uh, uh, speakers. So that's great. And, and no one will be turned away because of Thank you. I was hoping to hear that. So <laughs> all, all, all are welcome at 3 p.m. That's great uh, here. Um, immediately after the service, there'll be a time of um, coffee and refreshment outdoors. Um, we have been visited by a raccoon. Um, she or he was very friendly. We invited them to stay for the service. They did come out. They can come to a coffee hour, but we sold them. They have to, everybody's got to behave for coffee hour. But, um, that was the first time I've been visited by a raccoon in the congregation. So that was a personal thrill for me. And I think Paula took care of it. Thank you, Paula. Um, and immediately after coffee hour, I'd say about 12, if anybody would like, we have an amazing film. I don't know how many of you made it out to the Sacred Quilt Project um, uh, in, in honor of George Floyd and, and in memory of George Floyd that happened at the Harambe Center on uh, Pine Street. But the film is available. And if I can get my computer to look up here, which I think I can, it's a 19 minute film. It's very, very moving. So anybody who wants to, that's at about 12 o'clock. If you want to stick around till after coffee, I will be showing that. So now let's, uh, deepen and dig into our service by lighting our chalice. We do this each week that we gather here at UUCC as a symbol of love and inspiration. Would you please read with me the unison chalice words on your screen or on your, on your order of service? We light this chalice in grateful, loving community. Even in the darkest of times, may its flame light paths to courage, justice, and hope. And our unison affirmation, May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love to all living beings. May we know once again, that we are not isolated, but connected in wonder and joy, in mystery and miracle, in the universe, in this community, and in each other. Let us join together in song. We'll sing num hymn number 163, for the earth forever turn. <laughs>
Ayet Sedi. In the spirit of that hymn of gratitude, as this is the last service I'll be leading for a little while, I'll be back in July 24th for uh, but taking a little summer break. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who was involved in services over the past year, or academic year as it's sometimes called. This is an, an enormous cast of volunteers who make the Sunday service and religious education happen from week to week. And sometimes I give them, if I remember, the briefest of thank yous at the end of the service, and sometimes I don't. So I just want to say once again, the, the folks who have done so much to make this service happen happen. Um, and I'm going to forget people. So if your name is forgotten, it's because you're especially important. You're in there, especially important. Um, I take you for granted. But um, I just want to thank our uh, tech team who records and broadcasts all our services. Uh, Bruce Wilde, first person here most Sundays. Jenny O'Grady Giddy, who handles the Zoom, prepares the slide deck, for these amazing slides um, on the worship committee, so much more. Tom Hackett, Kristen Shara, um, Don Critchell, Kathy Kastner, all our Zoom hosts, and our worship committee, um, everyone who serves on that, um, and plus our worship associates, Pat Hurst, Vicky O'Doherty, Kathy Atwell, Liz Thomas, Bill Lindsay, our musicians, Bill Toole, Ella Catabioni, Linda McCaw, Liz Thomas, um, our religious education teachers, Austin or Irwin, um, and all our religious education teachers. And certainly, last but not least, uh, I can thank our, we are very lucky to have our incredible music director and RE director, um, music director Catherine Catabiani and our religious education director Jane Podell, as well as Lori Nash, our administrator, who puts together the order of service each week. So thank you, a big thank you to everyone who does all that. And it's not just Sunday worship, of course. So much goes on here to keep this place going. And it's we have had a volunteer Sunday. I won't mention everyone, but I just want to say again because it's a transition. Um, uh, that two people are, the board is an incredible amount of work. It's a, it's a difficult, difficult job, volunteer job, one of the hardest jobs, volunteer jobs in the universe. And Patricia Hurst and Bill Lindsay are stepping down from the board and stepping up to about six other responsibilities. So thank you to Pat and Bill for all that they do. And to all the board and our treasurer and assistant treasurer, it is an incredible amount of work. Um, and speaking of buildings and grounds, for the last 10 years, 10 years, our building and grounds chair has been Vicki O'Doherty. So I especially want to say thank you so much for all you've done for us. So you know me, I put it all in a poem. Uh, this is a poem I did, I adapted, I have written it before, but um, I did say shout at the end. Um, you can just say it because we're in COVID and keep your masks on. But, but this, is, this, is, this is about all the people who help make this place what it is. And your part is to say bravo. You want to try that? Bravo. Got it. Good, good. Uh, uh, bravo to our teachers who help us become more thoughtful, more caring, and more full of fun. They talk and they listen. They're right there to help. And when we're laughing or crying or even need to yelp, through the games that they play and the things that we discuss, they help us become more totally us. And so to our teachers who bring our true selves out, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, Bravo! Bravo to our leaders who sometimes find time to meet from 6.30 to a quarter past 29. And they don't meet for profit. They don't meet to win. They don't meet to swindle or dwindle or spin. They meet to make real the love in their hearts. They meet they, 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 that they feel for the people in these here parts. So to all our leaders who let their love out, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout. Bravo. Bravo to our Sunday team who lead us in services. They rehearse the tech like worry-filled dervishes from home or in this space, and they bring us their truth to inspire and transform, to rejoice and to soothe, whose music divine and words of great power remind us of the greatness of life in full flower. So to those who remind us what life's all about, we proudly, re loudly, resoundingly shout, bravo. bravo to our greeters, and bravo Karen particularly, who are there to make sure that everyone gets a smile as they walk through our door. They answer our questions, they greet us by name, they really and truly are glad that we came. They help every person who comes to this UU feel that our beloved community can be their community too. To those who look after us, whether we're here or we're out, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, Bravo. Bravo to all makers who bring goodness and beauty from the chalk chip cookie bakers to the paintings of things fruity. That line was a bit long. And to those fixers who make this place shine, who bring in their hammers and their rolls of twine. So many people working with pluck and know-how to make us say, ooh, and that's nice and wow. <laughs> to those makers of beauty within and without, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, Bravo. Bravo. 
but about to all carers who make calls to homes, to hospital email, mailbox, and phones, and everywhere they go, they go there to stay, and it's you that they're thinking of with love to today. At times when life's crazy or that we're feeling blue, they're here with kind words, maybe a card too. So for those who know we'll be there without any doubt, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, bravo. bravo. Two more, we're almost there. <laughs> These are two important ones. Bravo to all strivers who make the world better, who march at a rally or send in a letter, who commit with their money and give of their time, who says of their lives, what's mine is not just mine. They know that every person of a, is of inestimable worth and cherish ecology, our beautiful earth. To those whose love is measured beyond any amount, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, bravo. bravo. And finally, bravo to all comers who gather each week, the big, little, young, old, the proud and the meek, wanderers, worshipers, lovers of leaving, who come here to celebrate, who come here when grieving. You come through your screens and in person too. You come because somebody might need you to. And so to you that are who, who this place is all about, we proudly, loudly, resoundingly shout, bravo. bravo. And now we have the big announcement, the presentation of our service award this year. And here to tell us about it is Geraldine Ness. And Karma, oh, sorry, Karma Haas. Karen. And Karma Haas and Karen Miller. Three of our service award winners, Karma Haas, Karen Miller, and Geraldine Lynn Mason, who still do so much for this, this congregation. That's very impressive, Reverend Bob. So we were supposed to do this at the annual meeting, but she wasn't here. I don't know if she's here. She's not here. She's not here. <laughs> this year's service award recipient is a longtime member who is known for her quiet, reserved manner and her conviction to making the world a better place. She has been involved as both a teacher and coordinator with the religious with, with religious exploration. Her children went through our RE program and she has continued her involvement in volunteerism even after it had grown out of it. Any work that needs to be done, you'll see her helping. She has worked many times cleaning up the Memorial Garden and pitches in for any cleanup. This past year for the farmhouse cleanup, she hauled loads of stuff from the farmhouse basement to the rented dumpster. At the beginning of the pandemic, she learned on the spot the technical support we needed to run our worship services and Zoom meetings and continues to be a go-to person in that area. Then she took on the leadership of the Climate Action Team, which she has strongly resurrected. Her commitment to making a difference in our world and, take, and to taking care of planet Earth is inspiring. Please help congratulate our 2022 Service Award winner, Kathy Kasner. Probably most important, she's a ukulele player. <laughs> so when we see her, we're going to give her this ukulele that it's a waterman. It play, you can play this in any kind of weather. So no matter what the climate change brings us, she's going to be able to play her ukulele. And it has our stained glass window on the back. Congratulations to Kathy, who in so many ways lives out that love in her heart, her love for the earth, her love, uh, such a good organizer of, of people, such a wonderful soul. So we are, are so grateful for you, Kathy. Uh, and we have a, uh, uh, from time to time, we joyfully and solemnly welcome new members to this congregation. And today we have the great pleasure to welcome into junior membership, Austin Irwin. So Austin, would you come forward to I think some of you know Austin. 
In fact, some of you are a little envious that I get to say just a few words about Austin here, because as we welcome him. But Austin, for those of you who don't know and wondering uh, what it's about, Austin is very well known to this congregation, grew up in this congregation, um, and is one of our leaders, is one of our leaders in religious education, so many times is helping out uh, next door and, and leading next door and teaching next door. Um, and, uh, and leads and teaches and dances out in the world and, and brings a message of, of hope and, uh, and, and, and uh, inspiration out into the world. Um, and I just, I'm always grateful to see you every Sunday. I feel like we, uh, there's just something about your spirit, Austin, that I find just um, really uh, inspiring and true and integrity and just, um, uh, it's all, it's, we're all delighted that you're a part of this congregation. You have been for a long time. According to the laws of New York, can't vote till you're 16 here, but that's coming soon. So, um, and we, we really respect your counsel, your wisdom. We know that you're growing. We're, we're honored and proud that we've been a part of your, your growth here at UUCC. Um, and we love you. So with that, it's great to welcome you to my Thank you. We've gathered these flowers at the front and thank you all to, who, who brought flowers and who brought yourselves here as a symbol of the way that we gather our gifts in community. Um, and it's a symbol of how beautiful it is to be together, both in this community, but also in the wider world. Each person brings a beauty to the world that no one else can replicate. As such, each person, no matter how small or large, thorny or smooth, of every color, each person has a responsibility to shine forth into the world. As I'll say a little more about uh, in, this, in the homily today is also Juneteenth. This commemorates the date in 1865 when the news and declaration of freedom for all people came to Galveston, Texas. The first um, ship of enslaved people came to this country in 1619, 250 years earlier. And in the Civil War, Black Americans fought for their freedom in the Union Army, ending slavery and also preserving our union, helping this country live out its ideals. This is still happening today. And even as this country still lives far short of our ideals, we have a responsibility to recognize the inherent worth and dignity of every person, our beauty, our right to a good life. These flowers represent the hope of a world where we truly recognize one another's worth and live together in the garden of delight an ecosystem of fairness and justice. We dedicate these flowers with the words from Norbert Chapek, who I'll also say more about in the, in the sermon, um, who, who created flower, flower Communion, and he wrote this prayer. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us amid diversities of knowledge and gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship, but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. So we'll pass these flowers out in a minute, but first we'll have our time of dedication and of, of, of reflection and prayer. So now, as is our tradition um, at, at, uh, on, a, on Sundays, uh, we'll have our joys and sorrows. If you have a, one more story, joy, we, we gather here from many different emotions, from sorrow and hope and concern, relief, gratitude, and all of them are gathered together, whether spoken or unspoken, whether our needs are spoken or unspoken, we, we are together in one... Uh, garden of compassion and in being there for one another. So we, we gather together in that spirit of so many different emotions, but in one spirit. Now we'll have a time of uh, a prayer. We'll have a spoken prayer followed by a time of silence. I invite us to pray. Spirit of freedom, 
spirit of gratitude, God of our hearts, hope of good to be. We give thanks to be gathering here to honor what is beautiful and good in one another and in our world. We give thanks for fathers and all those who took care of us, raised us, sheltered us, help us to become ourselves. Those fathers and grandfathers who are here with us, thankfully, and those who are here with us in other ways. We treasure your name in our hearts. We honor all those who have helped make this world a little more lovely, a little more devoted, fixed what was broken, gave of themselves. We ask for forgiveness for any fathers and all others who are only human for our human mistakes. And let us try and find in our hearts forgiveness for those fathers and father figures who did not live up to everything we needed them to be, or that they may have hoped for themselves in their best moments. But rather bring us from all harm and imperfection. Let the spirit of hope bring us ever more gradually to the good. Let us be grateful to all the good that has been done for us and for each other for so many years. Let us be fathers and mothers to each other, siblings and family to each other, helping create the best in each of us, especially those who need it the most, those who are grieving, those who are hurting and the poor. Today is Juneteenth, as well as the day we celebrate our own flower ceremony. Norbert Chapek, the founder of Flower Communion, preached hope and goodness right in the terrible time of World War II. In spirit, he is still giving us that message today. The human beings who were kept in bondage in this country survived unimaginable horrors. Their spirit that was threatened at every turn, utterly broken at times, healed at times. The spirit of these human beings who were enslaved is the true spirit of America. And black Americans in 2022 are the inheritors of that spirit. And all of us who are allies in the struggle for universal justice and universal freedom, full freedom, the freedom to live a full and vital and self-appointed life, we are all living under the light of that indomitable spirit and we give thanks for it. This is our calling to survive and to thrive like the flowers, but according to human beauty and human kindness and human goodness. To give ourselves over to the fierce determination of hope, to seed love, to create opportunities, to be fathers and mothers and siblings for each other and to create opportunities for justice to flourish. Let there be freedom and delight for every beautiful person on this planet. Let the earth breathe free and may we be in right relationship to it. May we live in beauty. Ashe, shalom, salam, amen. Uh, we'll go into our silence by singing the meditative hymn, um, which is, we'll, we'll sing, uh, oh, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom, which is 157. You may remain seated. We'll sing it and then we'll enter into our silent message. <laughs>
May we continue to bring freedom to one another, to ourselves and to each other, to every last one of us until we can say, free at last, free at last. Thank everybody, we are free at last. The half plate donations this June will go to the Hudson Valley LGBTQ Center. The center's mission is to strengthen support app or with PayPal. You'll see the QR codes on the order of service for Banco and PayPal. And I just want to add at the end of the service, I have an announcement about next week's service. Now we'll have the offertory played by Constance and it's called Bound for Freedom by Pat Humphreys. Yeah. Montgomery and Selma and the streets of Birmingham. People sent a message to the leaders of the land. We have fought and we have suffered, but we know the wrong from right. We are family, we are neighbors, we are black and we are white. Here I go, bound for freedom. May my truth take the lead, not the preacher, not the Congress, not the millionaire, but me. We will organize for justice. We will raise our voice in song, and our children will be free to lead the world and carry on. From a cell in Pennsylvania, from an inmate on death row, Mia had the courage to expose the evil show. From the courtroom to the boardroom, in the television's glare, how the greedy live off poor and hungry people everywhere. Here I go, bound for freedom. May my truth take the lead. Not the preacher, not the Congress, not the millionaire, but me. We will organize for justice. We will raise our voice in song, and our children will be free to lead the world and carry on. Here we go, though we're standing on our own, we remember those before us, and we know we're not alone. We will organize for justice, we will raise our voice in song, and our children will be free to stay in the world and carry on. From the streets of New York City, across the ocean and beyond, people from all nations create a common bond. With our conscience as our weapon, we are witness to the fall. We are simple, we are brilliant, we are one, and we are all. Here I go, bound for freedom. May the truth take the lead. Not the preacher, not the Congress, not the millionaire, but me. We will organize for justice. We will raise our voice in song, and our 
Flower communion is a celebration of life. It is a celebration of both the life of the natural world, the flowers all around us, and all other life, and also a celebration of human life, of our life together in community. I'd like to invite uh, Jake and also, are you willing to do this? Our, our, to, 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 to lead us to, to pass the flowers out to this congregation. So you will each get a flower representing the beauty of life and the beauty of yourself. Um, you might need a couple of people to help. Are there any anybody else who's willing to be the children who ever lead? Thank you, Alan. Just take one. Yeah. Um, if you have your eye on one particular flower, sometimes you have to deal with how life comes. But whatever flower you get, it will be beautiful. Oh, thanks. Oh, you got, do you want to do the big one? So everybody hold up your flowers for a second. Has everyone got one? Now I know we're joined, we're much, uh, we're grateful to be much larger than this room. So those of you at home on Zoom, we'd love to bring you flowers for each other. But if we don't accomplish that, know that we love you and we're imagining you as beautiful as one of these flowers. You hold in your flower, in your hands, a flower as beautiful and unique as you are. You see around you the beauty of others, beauties inside yourself as well. So we're, 
renewing here our resolution to live as a family, a part of the same family of joy and glory. Now, I said I would mention, you can put them down now if you can. I'll, I'll have you, you got the hang of it now. I'll ask you to do that again in a minute, just to give you, to give you some. But I, I was going to say who, who Norbert Chopik was, because I mentioned him, and I, I know some of you may know this story, some of you may not. Flower communion ceremony was first observed in 1923 by Norbert Chopik in the Unitarian Church in Prague. And Chopik had been born in what was then Czechoslovakia and then discovered Unitarianism when he and his wife, Maya, were living here in New Jersey. And they were looking for a place to bring their children, actually, to religious education. And he, they didn't really want to go to church, but they wanted somewhere to bring the kids. And they found a Unitarian congregation and they never looked back. And eventually, I think both Maya and Norbert became ministers, actually. And in 1921, just before the founding of the Plough community, they moved back to Czechoslovakia and founded the Czech Unitarian Church, which soon grew to about 8,000 people. We've got a ways to go before we get there, but it grew. <laughs> and it's still a very active. You can still go to Prague and visit the Prague Unitarian Church. And in 1923, he was looking for a ritual to show how we all have unique talents and personalities, but we're all part of something larger than we are. He's looking for a representation of beloved community. And he invented the Flower Communion as a reminder to his congregation of how wonderful life is and how important it is we contribute to this uh, beauty of human community. Now, the individual life of Norbert Chopik came to a courageous, very courageous, and very sad end. When the Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia, Chopik could have left. He wasn't Jewish or Roma, but he chose to stay. And week after week, he broadcast these messages to his congregation, which were a little bit coded, but not very. It was pretty obvious they were speaking out against the Nazis and Nazism in particular and for human possibility and human freedom. And he was eventually arrested at home for the crime of listening to the BBC, listening to a foreign um, journalism. And he, his life ended at the Dachau prison camp in 1940. But I, wanna, I don't wanna end with that. I wanna remember that his life was a joyful one. I've read his biography. I'm really fond of Chopik. He and, his, he and his family used to create a brass band. He had like loads of kids. He and Maya had loads of kids. And he gave them all an instrument. They all played in the house. You can imagine that tuba and trumpet. And they loved nothing more than playing a brass band. Um, he loved to speak out for justice in many other ways as well, not just at the end of life. And I just want to remember, feel that love and joy is still with us. Still that brass band is still playing somewhere. And I still feel that Norbert's here in the room. And if we have a few of us who had the privilege of seeing these sacred quilts with the, the last words of George Floyd, I heard several people say they felt the presence of George there um, in this very harrowing situation. But you felt that, you know, with the love and uh, devotion that those quilters had given to George and, and that everybody was thinking about um, uh, uh, George and, and his story, there was the love in that room. We, we felt the presence of George. And here I feel the presence of Norbert Chopik as well. And Juneteenth happened a couple of centuries before the, uh, 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 Juneteenth happened in 1865, which was a couple of generations before the Norbert Chopik story that, um, in the Civil War. And people often ask why Juneteenth is celebrated and not the Emancipation Proclamation, which was in 1863. Um, that declared um, uh, the, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the slave states, all, all people free. And the historical reason, I think, is that Juneteenth came out of Texas with African-Americans in Texas after the people enslaved in Galveston were for, informed, they were the last ones to inform that the war was over and that they were now free. And the first Juneteenth was celebrated in Texas in 1866. The uh, African-Americans there wasted no time in honoring the seismic shift in our country. But in many ways, the delay between the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 and the Galveston Declaration two and a half years later is emblematic of how slow justice is to actually take shape in our nation and in the world. Yeah. A lot of people have been waiting a lot more than two and a half years for full freedom, for fairness, for a society that really values all of us and sees the dignity and beauty in all of us. And Juneteenth kind of recognizes this delay between intention and action. The civil rights leader, Fannie Lou Hamer, said, nobody's free until everybody's free. So I love that thought of nobody's free till everybody's free. And the last um, message of freedom of the Civil War, it's honoring that day, the last human being who was unfairly, unjustly enslaved. When they got the message of liberation, that is, that is what we honor when all of us are free. 
We'll say, I, was, I didn't say this in Joys and Sorrows, but I, I had a, a particular joy last night. I was privileged to be a guest at the 50th anniversary of Father Frank Helania. Do the people know Father Frank here? He's been involved, he's been um, uh, Episcopal priest over at Santa Cruz or Holy Cross um, in Kingston. And as many of you know, he has also been hugely involved in the Ulster Immigrant Defense Network, which we are uh, involved with as well. He has been fighting for respect for immigrant families and fighting against white supremacy, supremacy for decades now. A few of us were talking this week in very profound conversation about what it means to be an ally. And few people, certainly few white people have been an ally for as long or as hard as Father Frank. It was very inspiring. And I wanted to bring up one thing from Father Frank's sermon that, that brought, came home to me and I hope that it might speak to you. He was talking about being a, a boy in Brooklyn from an Italian family and he was an acolyte at a lot of funerals, but there was one particular funeral which was part of a, a notable family who often wore dark suits and um, sunglasses and they helped pr uh, protect against what you might say disorganized crime in the neighborhood. Uh, and it was, yes, it was a mafia family and he was entranced by the glamor and glory of it all. And right there he decided he was gonna become a priest <laughs> uh, because a priest was at the front conducting the funeral, I guess. And that was a very different uh, road than the mafia. And it is a calling that has humbled and challenges Father Frank these last 50 years. But what I want to really mention is when he got back to a sermon, got back to organized crime, and he basically said, you know, there are many different types of organized crime in this country. Yes, the Italian mafia is organized crime and the Nazis who shut down Chopek's church and imprisoned him in Dachau and where he ended his life. Well, they were organized crime that took over many different national governments. But white supremacy, a vast system of formal and informal restrictions that reduce opportunity, create fear, create dehumanization, create the ghettos. This white supremacy set up over 400 years that is com committed to the ongoing comfort of one set of people by looking the other way, by not fully recognizing the humanity of ev everybody else. This is organized crime as well. It's very organized. It's legitimized by the state, but it's still essentially the mafia. The way this country treats immigrant families is organized crime. The way the laws, the tax laws and the criminal code are written for the haves, paving the way for more and more wealth while pinching at every turn, the have nots, the struggling, keeping the poor always looking over their shoulder at another looming bankruptcy is organized crime. The mafia, so to speak, is everywhere. And speaking from his own Episcopalian Christian perspective and invoking the mysterious, always countercultural call of the Sermon on the Mount, Father Frank said that you cannot serve both organized crime and the kingdom of God. Are we going to keep picket fences around our wealth and privilege, keep dividing our country by all our unspoken but oh so per pervasive prejudices? Are we going to keep this system going by our inaction, by our inattention? Or are we going to, and, and look the other way, or are we going to bless those who have nothing? Find ways to truly bless them, not just lip service. And I know a sermon is just lip service until we do something. Uplift those who are reviled simply for being who they are. And that counts for so many people in this country today, unfortunately. Are we going to turn the tables on this country, dig deep and plant seeds of justice and kindness? So we have to choose, choose our path. Could say it's, uh, in Father Frank's words, you got to choose God or the mafia. And many of us I know are non-theists, but I'm not talking about right now whether or not you believe in a man upstairs. I'm talking about whether you believe in your neighbor. Are you really willing to fight for the transgender kid in the ICU? Are you really willing to fight for the young black man in Kingston who has lived here all his life and still feels like an outsider with every glare every dismissive glance, every unreturned resume, every slow moving cop car? Are you really gonna fight for the immigrant family washing your dishes at the restaurant, invisible and yet unprotected? Do you believe? Do you believe in the beauty of your neighbor, in the worth of your neighbor? And are you going to be an ally? Are you going to fight for them? Because there are systems of oppression in this world of ours that are always geared against the outsider the disempowered and the poor. <clears throat> We're seeing the machinery of oppression stir into life against women's rights. We're seeing hatred against gays and lesbians being written into state constitutions. It's organized crime. 
and we have to find another way and believe in something different. Somebody has got to announce freedom to that last enslaved human being in Galveston. Will it be you? Sometimes we have to wait a long time. We can be tempted to lose hope to say it's all going downhill, but Norbert Chopek and the African-Americans who served in the Union Army and so many people who have lifted up a message of hope were waiting decades and lifetimes to, to proclaim another message. And that message gets proclaimed through the years somehow. Someone's got to proclaim freedom and maybe it, maybe it can be us. I want you to hold up your flowers. There was a prayer that Norbert Chopik wrote and he wrote at the very end of his life. And I'm going to read it. I read it every flower ceremony. He wrote, it is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals. Oh, blow ye evil winds into my body's fire. My soul you'll never unravel. Even though disappointed a thousand times or fallen in the fight, everything would worthless seem. But I have lived amidst eternity. Be grateful, my soul. My life was worth living. May it be so. May we all live amidst eternity in the beauty of the flowers, in the joy of human company. May our lives be abundantly worth living for ourselves and each other. Amen. Let's sing our, our closing hymn, Circle Round for Freedom, hymn number 155. 155. <laughs> your flowers up one more time you friends are beautiful the earth has made you mother nature has made you god the divine has made you and made you unlike anything else and yet a little bit like everything else and you have been made beautifully and your neighbor has been made beautifully you are surrounded by beauty you are called to recognize that beauty, not just in the people that think like you or you, 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 you feel a, a kinship with, but in all things and in the diversity of humanity and its creation. Let us be grateful for this incredible, wondrous beauty we live amongst and we live out into our lives. Let us be grateful for this love that allows us to live out this beauty. May it be so. Amen. Amen. As we do each, to each, we extinguish the flame with our uh, closing reading. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. 
These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. To you I give, together we share, and from this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. Peace be with you. Thank you. Uh, Jenny has an announcement. I don't know what it is, so I'm, I'm in suspense too. And uh, please stay for breakout rooms if you're on Zoom or um, uh, coffee and fellowship if you're, if you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Bob. What a lovely service. This is an announcement about next week's service. It's the UUA General Assembly. It's being held in Portland, Oregon this year. So instead of our usual Zoom Sunday service, we will stream the worship service from General Assembly. The time will be 12.30 New York time, as the service will commence at 9.30 a.m. in Oregon. So you can watch the service by clicking on our regular Sunday Zoom link, as I will be streaming it out or you can watch on your own by clicking on the, the Zoom link from the UUA website. And this information will be in our regular email updates.